Welcome to another Tide Talk podcast. My name is Fernando Herrera, and today I'm talking to David Alvarado, uh, founder and CEO of Tire Depot. We're in uh, La- Los Angeles, right? Los Angeles, California? Right, yeah, South Central. All right, That's awesome, man. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the tire business, starting in the tire business, and more specifically, I want to talk about starting uh, a distribution or wholesale of tires because I think... Um, out of all the people I've spoken to, I think you're one of the companies mm-hmm. that has big potential and a lot of growth in such a short period of time. And uh, yeah, so I'm very excited for this podcast. David, thank you so much, man, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And I know it's, uh, it's 7.50 p.m. This is the only time we could make it work because during the day, you know, David, <clears throat> David had some, some, some work, right, some deliveries. But uh, for those, I know you very well, David. I mean, we've known each other uh, for a year now. No, for a year and two months. For a little more, yeah. yeah. And you reached out to me once. Uh, I think you uh, you saw either one of my videos, or I don't know how, how we were acquainted. Mm-hmm. And I was coming back from China last summer, and you told me if I could, like, I think, I don't know if it was me or you, but we, we said, let's meet in person. I'll be in LAX. You said, I'll go pick you up at LAX. And I had that jet lag. And I, I thought we were going to go eat lunch in like five minutes away from LAX. But I think it was like, like 30, 40 minutes Around away. The, yeah, it was kind of far, yeah. Yeah, and I, I remember expecting. I just like fell asleep. Um, and I kind of felt bad because I was struggling not to fall asleep, man. But I just fell asleep. And, and after that, I think we kept contact. We did some business. But... Uh, that's how long I've known you now for a year. So for those of you who don't know you, uh, who is David Alvarado and what is Tire Depot? David Alvarado is, is no one, absolutely no one. I want to be someone. What is Tire Depot? Uh, I guess you could say a, a new new and upcoming wholesale company that's here to stay and here to provide value for for the whole U.S. and the world eventually uh started out uh pretty much installing tires at my father's shop in in south central as well over 30 years in in business still operating and yeah that's pretty much on a simple level how how uh tire depot was was branched out of so let me ask you this: um, mm-hmm. Is your father's business called Tire Depot as well, or how's uh, what what's that business called? So my father's business is called Alvarado's Tires. Okay. Uh, whoever's in LA has probably probably heard about it. Uh, that he started that around when he was in his early twenties, early twenties. Um, immigrant came came from Mexico, Zacatecas, yeah. and and has been. Pretty much in in the tires since since he since he got here to to the U.S. Okay, and what happened, man? Like, why why not continue with Alvarado's tires? Like, what happened? Did you just one day woke, wake up and said, "Hey, let's"? It's not, it wasn't one day. It was multiple days, multiple nights of of the fear of going out of business with you know with the traditional tire shop. And, and, uh, yeah, that, that in, that, that forced me to move. You know, I was, especially younger, as a younger person, I was more complacent, more, more passive, more let things, you know, roll by and all things are going to be better tomorrow, you know, without thinking about changing the future to get to that new tomorrow, you know? So we... We decided to to start to start uh, importing importing uh, new tires as kind of a defensive approach. But I would say based out of fear of going out of business. Uh, that that I would say in about six months turned into a an attacking approach of of the next decade. You know, and plus, so we we shifted from a defensive play to an attacking play. Uh, pretty much, you know, using the same same formula. 
Okay, now what has really struck me very impressive is last year I talked with you, you, you were doing zero wholesale, zero import to my belief. Mm -hmm. And as of a period of 12 months, uh, about how many containers have you been able to displace, let's say, um, in total, roughly? So we moved about, I think year to date, well, we have about 24, 24 containers uh, that, that we've been able to, to serve here, and especially local. How, how now, out of all those containers, how many are you actually selling within your own father's shop? Like, what do you say? It's a... I'll percentage. say it's about 30%, 30% retail and 70% wholesale. Okay. So that to me, again, is, is very impressive because I think the, the main reason when we met, you reached out to me wanting to start importing. So what was your biggest fear at that time? Biggest fear was pretty much just being a, another small little tire shop on the corner that that will just patch your tire. That's pretty much the, the only fear. And, and having just bigger companies dominate what is you known as, as like the new tire and, and, and the used tire, more targeted towards uh, the new tire. And, and yeah, that, it's pretty much that fear, so. But for example, uh -huh. like what, when you were, um, when you decided you're gonna start wholesale, why, um, what was your biggest fear to buy that first container? Because I remember you were a little bit fearful. Uh, about the money. Okay. About what the about money and, and not being, pretty much being screwed over, you know? Okay. Other than that, I mean, there wasn't no fear in terms of how to get rid of the product or what I'm going to do if I don't sell it. So number one fear was pretty much, I'm going to send money. Am I really going to get the product or right. am I going to get screwed over? Yeah, yeah. That was a fear, you know, like operating wise. But the mental fear was going out of business, Okay. If that, right. if that makes sense. Now, why did you decide wholesale? Why not expand on another retail business, uh, offer more service in a traditional level? Why, why you pick, you know, start importing tires and wholesaling? I've always been in love with the aspect of, of moving product around, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, how can I put it to you? bringing product from from this country and bringing it to over here or selling this product from here thousands of miles away without even touching anything so my 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 love i guess came from that and not towards the toward the retail side of of business because i'll be honest with you tires is it's boring you know <laughs> like we're just selling selling tires you know uh, or safety, like how, what, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Dave. Yeah. Dave, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're selling safety. But uh, I guess for wholesale, you know, we're just trying to trying to flip it and, and trying to provide value to, to, to that retail shop if it's not us or if it's not the, the client, you know. Now, did, did your dad get upset or how did you approach this with him when, once you decided you were going to open... Like wholesale. Uh, he he wasn't upset. He was just more skeptical of of uh, of moving the product and how are we gonna store it? You know, like no, no se va a mover or you know, eso no no sirve. Because he's he's used to selling more used tires. You know, that's what that's what he's 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 known for, not not the new. Has his mentality changed? Uh, I'll I'll say his his mentality has has changed because he sees that I'm doing it, I guess, kind of, you know, I'm not where I want to be where, but he sees that there's, he sees that there's starting to be movement, you know? Yeah. So he's more, he's more, um, he'll let stuff slide now, like, hey, there's four containers coming in. Okay, well, we'll start clearing out space. And because back then he wasn't like, no, you got to clear it out. He's going to come in. You got to be here in the morning and, yeah. And you gotta, so I guess he's, he is starting to reap those rewards of, you know. Of, of Believe getting, more in the, in the concept of wholesale and, and support perhaps more? Right, yeah, yeah. Okay, now 
I mean, it's so very impressive, man, that within a 12 month period, you went from zero to 24 containers sold and your trajectory, you know, I've, I've seen it and, you know, it's impressive in the sense that it's trending upwards. So you're selling mm -hmm. more and more and more. Is there, I don't want to, I don't want you to give, you know, your secret recipe here away, mm -hmm. but what would be your advice for a David that's in that same position, maybe in, in Michigan or in Florida or, or perhaps even California, hopefully Northern or, uh -huh. or somewhere else, but that's, that's also looking for that, that piece of advice that you think could be helpful. I would say first, create a plan, uh, create a plan. Number two would be know if there's demand, find people who are, are, are without even you having the product touch, start selling it, you know, because the, the container is going to get there. The, 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 it'll, it'll arrive, you know, where, where you want it to. That was, I guess the most important thing is, is getting rid of it, finding that demand. Number three, create a plan once you find that demand. Number four, uh, I'll, I'll say look at your personal personal, uh, the, 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 the personal environment, personal, like, where you are in life, what you have, what you don't have, what you could use, what you can't use. If you can use leverage with money or without labor, you know, start getting that figured out. And number five, uh, do it. Do the hard work. Yeah. I see your, um, for your operation, how many employees you got, man? I'll say, well, we have one. Yeah, one plus, plus me. <laughs> And that's fine. The reason I point this out, and look, I, I think it's very important. A lot of people see some of the videos I've done, some of the podcasts, and mm -hmm. it's great. You know, It's great to see people, once they're moving more and have more employees, but a lot of people fail to understand that all those people had to, to go through that same stage. Right. And putting that hard work, and that first employee has to be you doing the delivery, answering the phones, receiving the container, placing the buys you've already advanced to the step where you, you have an employee, you have a warehouse. And again, when I first met you, you didn't even have a place to put a container. Right. Like you yeah. were actually putting it in, in, in your dad's you know, yard. And now, you know, we're actually shooting the podcast in a warehouse that you're renting mm -hmm. and you have, you know, racks and you have inventory and, and you know, you're, you're established, right? Yeah, yeah. Just going back, I do have one employee now, but uh, there was a lot of family that helped, uh, you know, Family, brothers, cousins, uncles. Uh, I talk about a, a lot about Ramcast, you know, and his name's yeah. Felipe. He helps me a lot and, and his yeah. people as well. So, yeah, there, it wasn't just me and, and this one employee. It's always been, I would even take myself out of the picture and just put them yeah. realistically because I, I don't like seeing myself, you know, as, you know, as, as with them. They, they usually, they're the ones they're the how could i put it it's like if we're molding something a statue i guess i've I've put in the mask but they've they've polished it they've put the details they've crafted it out and they made it look look how it is now yeah because <laughs> if it was just for me i'll just I, I don't know where i would be with without them that's well, yeah. humble man man but <laughs> there's still some some value to be uh uh, some credit to mm -hmm. be given to you, uh, but I, I actually met Felipe as well. He's a very smart guy. He's, he looks like he really appreciates you, and and I think that's the whole point of having people around you. Going back to that point you were saying about environment, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have people around you that are willing to help, people that are willing to, uh, you know, give you that piece of advice or support when you need it, it could truly um, help you. You know, it's very important, especially at the beginning, right? Yeah, well, people who, who even if they long, uh, long-term goal, people who have who see your vision, or have the same vision as you, because at, at start, you know, hey, I'm gonna do this, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, but I mean, you you don't have no track like record, you haven't done anything, at least for me, you know, yeah. so it's it's getting those people to believe in you, 
and to invest in you, uh, monetary, physically, you know, mentally, everything. And invest in you, and and if they didn't see that goal, convince them, show them that that the goal is is real, and it it will be achieved. Okay, man. So I I wanted to ask. Um, can you tell me a good story when one of your family members uh, helped you? Like you mentioned, family is really important, and people have been there to help you. Like, can you give me a like a story of when was one time that you can really remember, like someone helped you out like that? I told my cousin, "Hey, go go to this area and hit up all these shops," and he was gone for. I told him, I don't even want to see you, like, for the rest of the day, like, since the morning to the night. And he was out there. It was, I mean, he he gave out a lot of, uh, a lot of, we had, uh, we had, like, cards at that point. And it was, like, 110. It was, it was hard, you know. It wasn't something that not everyone does. And he didn't. He didn't charge me, you know, and and that's se, se agradece, you know. I I respect it, you know. You're close on sales from there. Hey, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. He got his part, yeah. <laughs> he got his commission. Okay, good, good. Um, when you visit a new client, what's your pitch? <laughs> My pitch is meet them. Meet them in a more personal level. Uh, it could be within minutes or or be a plan that extends, you know, days. Uh, when I mean personal, I mean forget about the tires. Go in. Uh, if he's doing something or if she's doing something, uh, do you need help with something, like, First, I introduce myself, you know, but I don't go straight to, hey, I do this, I do this, I want to sell you this. If I see, there's been multiple cases, and there will be some shops that even tell you that. If I see them, like, busy, like, installing tires, and I even ask them, like, like do you need help? Like, you want me to take that tire over there, or do I pick up the jack to to to, to get it out? Um, or if they're eating, like, I, I go take them... Um, Whatever. Uh, you some, take some, their customer? Huh? You take their customer? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take them lunch or I take them something, something to, to, yeah. to drink, you know? So, okay. So you, you'll get there. You analyze the situation. You say, hey, if this guy's busy, I'll help him. I'll offer my help with, right, with right. labor. Hey, can I install this tire or help you with the jack or help you with whatever, with whatever I can? And then after that, then that's when they will... Uh, you will kind of present your yeah. purpose, right? If if the opportunity comes, you know, sometimes like no, nah, like that's fine. I don't want it, and you know, it's just time wasted. But yeah, but I, it's 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 part of it, and that I guess that I try to tend to go that way because it kind of comes natural from me to try to help people. Um, ever since I was a kid, you know, I, I used to play. I, I would play soccer. And I, it was like a practice, and like there were some kids like messing, like I was so small, like five, five, six, seven around there. I was like to drill the ball, like all going forward, and I would like I I would see them like not, so I would just like leave mine, and go over there and like let's go, like let let me try to help you, you know. I see. Yeah, that would be. Uh, I w it always comes. I would say it comes more, more natural. Give, give homeless food, you know, especially here in, in LA. Uh, I want to get towards. Uh, I would say creating like an event or being more active, where I do give back to, to the community in in, in, a, in one one way. Yeah. What do you say? It's a uh, number one problem your business has right now. Number one problem, I would say 
I would say um, not keeping up with demand and inventory. Selling out of something that I didn't think I would sell out or selling out of something that that I ordered a certain amount, but I need more already. Uh, that would be, I would say from since the beginning to now, that would be my biggest problem. And our second biggest problem from now in the future is how to hire and incentivize people to see the vision and to and, and to be part of it. And if and if we can hire, you know, sh talent right off the bat, it'll be creating that talent. You know, you, you, I I will say you always want someone that can do what you do. Uh, realistically, there won't be because it's your business or it's you, you're more you're more uh, you're more incentivized to do it. You know, you're you'll yeah, be more of the, the game. Of, of the of the cake. It's getting them to eat of the cake as well. Have them sit on your table. If you're sitting on my table, you're gonna eat as well. You know, and having everyone content and, and motivated. Okay, that's a uh, very deep man. Very like yeah. philosophical. Makes me makes me think. Um, I see you. You obviously, <laughs> we have some tires here. Um, how do you pick the brands you, you sell? Or is it purely just price? Uh, how do you know what you want to buy and what to offer? At first, at first it was price. Uh, at first it was finding, you know, that, that bang for your buck. You know, but as, as, you, as, you, as you operate more and you start seeing what what the demand is and what they're and w see what if you're going back to like the five steps I told you like find your demand now once you find your demand what's their demand and what do they need you know so so if once you get their demand you start seeing okay well I like this brand because it does this I, I don't like this brand because it doesn't or it does do this so now that you have options you start you start seeing what you can start bringing, what's worth, what's, you know, what makes sense economically, uh, and, and how to, how to offer to this, to client A, B, and C, and how to offer this other product B to client D, because they don't want the first product that you want, and just pretty much just mitigating all that, uh, getting, getting all that, you didn't know that situation. It's like a Ferris wheel, you know. Uh, everybody, every if a client is in each little pod, some have different needs, or some see different because some are higher or some are lower. You know, they all have a different perspective. So, as an operator of the machine, you got to start figuring out who who is one, how much time they can get. How do you know what to buy, like in terms of sizes, though? So? So whatever, whatever, whatever moves the most. Whatever I see the man of. Uh, at first, it it was just a throw a dart, you know. And so your first container was just. Well, I'm I had, gonna get these ten tires that I know are popular. Right, and right. I'm, Those tire sizes, and then once you. And, right, and I'll move it, and then. Uh, how, how I've been telling you, just seeing what the demand is and what their demand is. I. I start pivoting and 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 seeing what they want because at the end of the day they're the the clients the one who 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 runs the show you know and by the way i i, I haven't mentioned this before but uh we do want to thank the sponsor of this video tire base uh tire base is the sponsor of this video and uh david actually tire depot has been a client of tire base in the good and the bad uh you have any words to say man uh, it's a, it's a, it's a good software. Uh, being honest, it was, how could I say, uh, as as someone who doesn't use, who didn't use software, 
it's a headache getting getting familiar with it and and trying to teach someone how to how to use it but once you start getting the hang of it there's no there there shouldn't be an issue you know it's it's created to to make uh business sim- simple you know so i don't there 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 shouldn't be a problem with it what's your favorite thing about the software man like what do you think it's like <laughs> The, the I know you again. I know you're not always. You haven't been always as uh, like a big software guy. But uh-huh. like, is there something that you do think like, man, this actually does help me in this way, or this my favorite part? The the bins, the bins and and the racks. Seeing, seeing, uh, seeing where it's at. You know where where the inventory is at, and and you not having to explain it to someone else. Yeah. When of the invoice prints or whatever, they automatically know. We do use the bins or no. Like yeah, you actually we, use them? Yeah, we use them, yeah. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Okay. That's cool, man. Okay. So <laughs> you think then the bins, even though it's a basic feature, like in the sense that it's not a full warehouse management feature, uh-huh. uh, just knowing where the exact location is, it's, it's a, it, do you actually like have them by rack or how? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you just integrate it to whatever's in real life. Like you take a, uh, like a map of your warehouse. And just put it on the inventory. Yeah, you go by racks, rack A, B, C, D. So you think that alone has saved you some time in finding out what tires are? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Because okay. at the end of it, like, what else? We don't do the nature of the business isn't really, like, what else would you do if, if you don't know where your product is and how you could get it out to fulfill the order? Okay. That's good, man. That's actually good. That's good to hear. Yeah, yeah. That's been that's been good. At first, it was you know, kind of shaky because yeah, I didn't really understand it. But once you start getting it, it's, it's fine. So for Tire Depot, man, what is the future you're looking for? Like, I, and again, you can share this or not. But like, how how old are you? Twenty two. 22, man. I'm old. I'm, I, you're very I, young. I, you're young. I feel like I'm 60. And I, 60 I, don't, and I don't like, you know, I always say everybody's in their own race, so it's never a good idea to compare yourself mm-hmm. with someone. This guy's at 22. He already has a warehouse or whatever. I don't see it that way. However, it, there is an advantage of starting younger. There, that's a fact. And, you know, to be where you are at age 22 and seeing the growth you've seen, you know, in the last year, um, it's, it's very impressive, man, especially when there's a lot of kids out there that, you know, there's 20, uh, 20s, 22s, 25s, and they, they don't have their, excuse my French, but they don't have their shit together, uh-huh. right? And you seem to be like a guy that's like 100% focused. You're, 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 you just know where you're heading, and I feel that that's actually very admirable, again, in the sense Thank that you. you just, again, you were like, I want to buy a container, you bought it, you sold it. I want to buy two containers. You bought them, you sold them. I want to buy three or four or five or ten, and, and you know, um, that's that's actually very good. So, what's what's in it for the future of of David and, and Tire Depot? Like, what is enough? Like, have you ever thought about like? First, let's start with that. Like, what's in it for the next five years, and mm-hmm. then maybe you could talk about what is the ultimate end game for you. Yes. Yeah, so I would say, five years, ten years, just expand, just keep keep going keep doing the same thing keep adding value uh not just to to our local market but start expanding different different states uh, i would say that that will be our, our major major goal and end of uh of uh, five years five years uh do you have numbers in mind or is it just expand like do you just, ever think about numbers like sales numbers or units you know what? And in terms of sales, I think uh, I think I'm more attracted to the units amount okay. of how I could move it and operating day to day, knowing I need to meet these numbers and eventually meet higher numbers, higher numbers, higher numbers will get me to those. The the units amount will do the math for for me. Meeting those those sales, you know. Do you have unit numbers though in mind, or is that something you haven't really thought about? 
unit units unit amounts i would say oh let's let's say that i want to be growing like more than 200 percent per year i don't so know if that's if, if this year you move 24 containers next year you want to do twice as much twice as much yeah so 60 containers or 60. 40 yeah around 40 50 60 okay. and then that next year do another do another 120 whatever the case right may be. right yeah i don't i don't think there's a there's a there's a like a number i want to hit them the more there is there is a, a number but in terms of like if we could like if i get there sooner like my my goal post just switched you know now we're hitting this. Okay, we we wanted to hit that. We hit it. Now let's hit that. And now let's hit that. Okay. And and start start turning the business to to more of a a logistical company. I've explained this yeah. to you as well. And and get more of a more of a more of an infrastructure play going on globally and then and now it's not just tires that we're importing now we're importing uh furniture your your cousin has a has a muebleria hey i know i know a chain from yep from this country that that could get there for you i could get it for you and i'll, so I'll make it touch to the logistics i'm attracted sites. to the logistics i'm, I'm attracted to to the to the global aspect if it's like if if the map was a like a game like that's my like my game piece like this is my horizon i'm not just focused on la or a certain market i know that for all those new i know we're starting it's still early man but it seems it appears to be that we're gonna be starting a joint venture here for all those new guys that are looking to start buying tires their first time they're nervous they got the butterflies in the belly and we want to help those type of businesses i think we both share that right like, oh, of course 100 percent. we want to help people we want to help those shops that are wanting to get into uh, importing and so we're going to have this new project called tire exchange right we haven't i think that's the name we decided on. i, I think that'll be that'll be the name yeah, yeah. so tire exchange and the purpose of it would be a buying group with your volume, with some of the volume I'm getting and bringing people on board. We can negotiate better rates, better terms, eventually maybe even do some sort of logistics deals uh, with this buying group. And so um, I think it would be worth mentioning this in this podcast, right? Because we, I get a lot of people actually, believe it or not, from some, from some of my other videos uh, scared with that same concern. I go to Alibaba, uh, I'm about to buy something and they don't know what to do. So what's your take on that? Yeah, f for, forget all that, like all that <laughs> Alibaba, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, like just when I did it, I, I didn't even like go on there because I already knew like nothing good will, will come out from there in my personal experience. Why? Because I've, I don't know, I don't know, I, I somehow didn't trust uh, didn't trust it. So sending 50 grand for a container and and a guy from Alibaba telling you to this bank account and I'll send you the tires. Yeah, yeah, no, forget, forget, <laughs> forget all that. That that would have never happened. Okay, I think me. that's very important. And again, for those of you watching who are really interested in buying containers, that you do have to cross reference, especially that first purchase. This happened just to me recently. I have a guy, a farmer in Missouri. He wants some containers, agricultural tires. And nobody out of my sources could get me those those tires mm -hmm. except this Indian company. And this Indian company, you know, I, I checked and their website is not good. There's no point of contact. The the invoice looks good, actually. And it might be a legit company, but there's no LinkedIn accounts, mm -hmm. no social media, no addresses. It just looks fishy and sketchy. And I've gotten scammed already, so I couldn't close that deal yeah. because of the fact that... We'll send someone over there. I don't want to be sure. greedy. I've been greedy in the past where I'll go like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you the the deal. I'll close the sale. I'll make some money. But at the end, you know, it, it screws over the the client. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, um, yeah, I think tire exchange will kind of remove that that barrier of concern 
because we'll have addresses, we'll, you know, we'll have more presence, we'll, we'll, we're here. There's nowhere to hide, right. we're, we're making it clear. The buying group will obviously, uh, you know, because we will need to buy uh, or hire some sort of administrative assistance and all that stuff, there, there will be some sort of surcharge, but it shouldn't be more than 4% at tops. And then that could help us fund even better deals. So, uh, you know, it's an interesting concept, still early stage, mm -hmm. but I thought it would be worth mentioning. Uh, you know, so yeah, if you're interested in buying some containers, uh, we're not exclusive. We're only going to sell one brand. We're actually going to be selling all the brands that we have access to and that everyone has access to and, and uh, then negotiate a, a rate for kind of like for us, right? Like as a, as a one group. Right. And, and I would say the, the goal for, for tire change will be for the buyer, uh, to run their business and not having their, in the back of their mind. Hey, I just sent out fifty thousand for a container, and never hear back or 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 what, what what's gonna happen. So the the goal will will be, and we'll we'll get there. Where we'll, tire exchange will take care of the everything pretty much a hundred percent, and will be instead of trying to instead of you contacting us and, and say, hey, where's my container? Where's my, where's this? Um, where's my five containers? We'll have people calling up or, or being on, on the phone, you know, on call, sending emails. Hey, uh, Mr. John, Ms. Don Julano, your, your container got sent out. It's one month in, it's in the middle of the ocean. It's gonna touch to the port in two weeks, three weeks. It's gonna reach your your warehouse in five days, seven days. Uh, yeah, that, that, that'll be the, the most ideal. And, and obviously, you know, trying to being, being in sync with being in sync with the, with the company and, and, and optimizing, picking how, how we could, we could grow with, with them and help most importantly, them grow their, their, you know, their business. All right, man. Well, that's that sounds exciting. And again, just uh, FYI, guys, that's only a factory direct program. So if right. it's a full container load, that's what Tire Exchange is going to be doing. Tire Exchange is not engaging in any wholesale delivery less than a container load, and it's not local uh, U.S. inventory container loads. Meaning, unloaded in the U.S. and then reshipped to you. It's coming directly from factory. The reason why we want to, we want to keep it that way is because you know uh, David engages in wholesale. A lot of the guests I've I've interviewed engage in local wholesale and FD. Some of them have FD programs, uh, but what we're what we want from Tire Exchange is primarily that factory direct, and for us to become somewhat of a, a negotiator, like a buying group. Uh, I mean, there's some buying groups out there, but like a buying group for for the smaller tire independent shops uh, that are wanting to get a better deal or that want to get started uh once they lose you know once you lose the fear you, you're obviously not required to keep buying from the group but um ideally i think the savings should justify that and again if you're a vendor or a brand that that wants to get in as well you can definitely reach out and we'll be more than happy to present uh, i think obviously at the beginning since we're just starting it's going to be very price oriented obviously price is going to be probably the most important thing uh but it's something to to keep in mind um and that's exciting well any last words david uh how can people contact you and uh yeah any last words for for our viewers here uh yes if if you guys do wanna wanna tap in you know start start doing business uh we're, we're open you know to 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 anyone and and uh, and try to try to adapt to understand your business model where where they want to get to, and and try to lead them, try to give them that extra boost, being Tire Depot or or Tire Exchange, to to set that that you know get that next level in in, in the tire industry. That that that'll be my that'll be it. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much, man, for your time. I appreciate it, man. And yeah, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you, brother.